Yeah. John Osteen's a jock and hot. Yeah, praise God. Good. John Osteen started it. I think Joel does it now. How many of y'all knew that there was somebody before Joel Osteen? Yeah. yeah. That's right. John Osteen. He used to hold, he's the one that started it. Hold your Bible book. This is my Bible. And then you, and then you, you hold your iPhone up. Mm-hmm. Because it was. I can't get on the phone. You can hide, you can highlight, you can digitally highlight. I'll get this some highlights up. I like books myself. I like books myself. I do have a lot of tablets to go by. Praise God. Deuteronomy 20, uh, 30, verse 19. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read several scriptures to you and then we'll go back and share a little bit. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says this. <clears throat> I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. And when it says against, it's not like he's testifying, but it's just I'm calling them to take, pay attention. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I, I this, is, this is the Lord, I, this is Yahweh, amen? This is God, the Creator. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life, say with me, choose life in order that you may live and you and your descendants or your seed. Now, Lord, you, you hold your finger. We're going to come back to Deuteronomy 3. I'm going to read to you from Genesis 2 9. And out of the ground the Lord God calls to grow every tree that is pleasing in the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm going to skip down to verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, he commanded the man, saying, from any tree of the garden you may eat freely. <clears throat> but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. Now I want you to look at this just, just briefly and understand this. It said he commanded the man. He spoke to them. When God, a lot of times people confuse things. He wasn't speaking a law. He was, he was literally saying, like I, I, tell, I tell one of my grandkids, I said, listen, I'm, I'm commanding you now. Command me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting your attention. You go out in the street, you're going to get run over. Mm -hmm. don't, go, don't go on the street. All right. Now, that's not because I wanted to deprive that grandson of the pleasures of the street. I wanted to deprive him of the unpleasure of being run over by a car. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to get to talking about something called free will today. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to you have to come to terms with the fact that God gave you a free will. In fact, that's one of the, one of the greatest gifts that He ever gave you. Amen. Amen? Amen. Now most of us don't realize we've got free will because people have told us we don't. That everything's predestined, laid out there, you know, it's just destiny, it's laid out there. You know, what's, what will be, will be. When your time comes, the time comes. Come on, you, all you're saying is you don't have a free will. But you don't have any say-so in your life. Their whole theology is built around it. It's your predestined. Some predestined to die, some predestined to... No, God's got a destiny for you, but that's, that's His heart's desire for your life. That's His, His vision for your life. He'll prophetically reveal it to you. But it's up to you to choose whether you're going to accept it or reject it. Or if, as you begin to pursue it, if you're going to stick with it or you're going to give up. I mean, it's called responsibility. Mm -hmm. But the good news also is this, that, that not only does God give you a destiny, He gives you an invitation. to A calling It's what a calling is. The word calling means it's an invitation. It's something you, you just because you're called to do something doesn't mean you'll do it. Right. I know tons of people that were that were called into ministry that never that never come into it, and they have this idea. What keeps a lot of people out of these things is this. This is good. Keeps it that keeps you out of this thing is you think, well, if God called me, and He'll do it. Well, He will. He will give you the grace to do it. He will give you the. He will equip you with the ability to do it, but He will not make you do it. 
He will not grab you by the neck and just push you into it. Now, he, he, the situations can get pretty extreme. You'll think he is, but you always have a choice. You have a choice whether whether you're going to do something or not. Sure. One of the biggest problems, most especially in our culture today, is this. People do not take a, a responsibility, do not take the responsibility for their own lives. Right. That's very evident. That's why we want, a, we want most people want a government that will provide you with everything. You provide you with food stamps so you can eat. They provide you with medical care to take care of your body. Are you out there? Mm -hmm. All those things. That's good. If you live in a, in a place where that's provided, that's a blessing. But when you when you depend on that, when you look to to another source for your your destiny, other than the calling God's got on your life, you're messing up. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting down food stamps. I'm not putting down medical care. I'm not putting that down. I'm just saying, so what your attitude towards it, you, it what you're looking like. We got to have health care. We got to have you know, food stamps. We got to have this. We got to have the government's got to take care of it. The government's got to protect us from ISIS. Amen. I'm not being boastful, but I'm, I can live the rest of my life without the government providing food for me. Amen. I can live the rest of my life without the government providing health care for me. I can sure take care of myself. If ISIS shows up at my door, somebody's going to get killed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to wait for the police to show up. I'm not going to wait for the government to show up. Sure. I'll shoot them. Amen. I'll witness to them first, but I'll shoot them afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you come up and come into my house, that's my house. You ain't coming in there. Amen. I'm not Amen. looking at the government. I do not call 911. Why don't I call 911? Because I've taken responsibility for my own household, my own family. I'm not looking to the government to take care of my family. Amen. Are you out there? Amen. Why? I'm not being boastful. Why? Because I've learned to depend on God. Right. Yes. He's my God. The government's not my God. That's right. Governments are good. Governments are for the lawless. Mm -hmm. The government, the laws for the lawless. One for the government, then all these crazy people be running all over. I'd have to be shooting more people. That's right. You got that? Think about it. See law. Take responsibility. To take responsibility is to receive God's ability. It's not like he's leaving, he's not leaving you out on your own. He's got ability. He's provided ability. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called grace. Say grace. Grace is the power of God to do what you got to do but you can't do mm -hmm. don't get grace confused with mercy God saved you out of his mercy he used grace to do it it was the power of God to do what you could do you couldn't save yourself so God released grace through Jesus Christ amen. to save you amen, amen. come on amen. but he did it out of mercy a lot of people confuse mercy and grace Grace is a tangible force that does stuff that you can't do. Amen. And it's God force. It's God stuff. You got to come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to respond to God's ability is to respond to His grace. Amen. But you have to make this choice. You say by grace through faith. Faith is a choice. You have to choose to believe God. Nobody's going to make you believe God. I can't make you. I've been trying some of you for 20 years. I can't, get I can't make I gave up. And I should have. I can't make you. <clears throat> You've got to make the choice. Amen. 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 Wake up time. Young people, young people, if you learn this, you quit waiting on somebody else to do stuff for you. The church is full of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, come on. The church has bred this kind of culture up in the church. Because everybody wants the, the pastor to do everything. Pastor, so and so sick. Come have, come, you come pray for him. What about the believers? So lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. 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 Pastor, come do this. Come do this. Come do this. Pastor, well, y'all don't do that. Now I'm just, I'm talking. I really am talking about it because y'all don't do that. I have other people outside this church call me all the time. Want me to do stuff. And the Lord, I just went there. I prayed for a man. We went and prayed for a man in the hospital that I hadn't seen in 25 years. 
And, and you know what he got? He, he, somebody said he had a dream. He said he saw a million pounds of pressure. But we got up and went New Year's Eve or what was that on third? And prayed for him. Amen. Amen. That's leading by the Holy Spirit. But you can't, you, you can't, you can't, a, a church cannot produce a culture of dependency on, on, on one or, or a staff of people. It's wrong. Sure. Say wrong. Wrong. The job of, of ministry is this, a fivefold ministry is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. I'm, I'm equipping you to do what you should do. Amen. I'm not doing it for you. If I'm teaching them about how to tie their shoe, if I tie their shoe every day of their life, they'd be 45 years old, depending on me to tie the shoe. Amen. They start probably start wearing loafers. <laughs> Amen. Your job as a parent is not to take care of your kids the rest of your life. Amen. <laughs> you should equip them. You should equip your kids when they don't need you. Amen. And then you can bum off them the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. When I get old enough to stop preaching, which will be about 100, 120, yeah. we're buying us, we've got it all planned out. We're buying us a motorhome and, we're got, we're, and an extension cord. <laughs> yeah. And we're gonna go from house. We're gonna be just like the plague of locusts. <laughs> we're, we're gonna go from house to house and knock on the door and say, "Mom and Dad are here. Here's the cord. Plug it up." <laughs> and we're gonna stay there until we eat up all the food. <laughs> until they want to run us off, and we, then we'll just unplug and go to the next house. I got five. I got five daughters. That's why you have five. <laughs> I got, I, you, people say, what's your retirement plan? I don't, you know, I don't have Social Security. I, don't, I went through Social Security in 1981. Mm -hmm. This is the privilege of ministry. I didn't pay Social Security. Of course, I don't get none either. <laughs> I don't have any health insurance. I don't have any health insurance. So what is your plan for retirement? Them five kids I write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And if they don't like it, it's too bad. I didn't like it when I was raising them. <laughs> we talked about this morning. I said, we said, we get to get ready for church on Sunday morning. And we're sitting around drinking coffee, you know, just relaxing, praying in tongues. So I think, good Lord, how in the world did we do this with five kids now? Ah! And your pap said, well, they were all spread out. Yeah, they didn't get any better. The, the older they got, the more they fussed and yelled and stuff. And, oh, he took my blouse. What am I wearing today? Oh, he went in the bathroom. Yeah. And I got to preach. <laughs> hey, man. I'm not bored, y'all. That's okay. Oh, praise God. He's the Lord command and said, this is what I'm trying to say. He said, from any of the tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. He's not saying, this was not just like something God was testing them with. Right. He's telling them, if you eat of that, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. People got the wrong idea. He said, you know, that tree, that's why they, they ate of it. They mm -hmm. came, you, know. you want people to do something, tell them they can't. Have you ever seen anybody drive 55 miles an hour on the expressway? On the freeway? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the law? Huh? I drive, just, I drive the lower limit. I drive 50 miles an hour. <coughs> I drive people nuts. I'm a sl I slow. Henry barred my truck. It, my truck, it run pretty good. It's got a big engine in it. Yeah, it I, I never drive it on 50 miles an hour. He drove it like 85, 90. Yeah, it overheated. Yeah, probably, yeah. That's good. That's all right. But I'm telling you, nobody, nobody, why don't they obey the law? Okay. Is it, is it, is it, is it a speed, is it a speed law or, or a suggestion? <laughs> no, See, people are like, really, people are all this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I got a real good response from that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he said that day you should you, you should surely die. You should surely die. 
All right, let me if you take you to James 1 14. But each one is tempted. If James is talking about knowing what God doesn't tempt anybody. He said, each one is tempted, James 1 14. Each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. Say lust. 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 Now, in the South, lust means some sexual sin. Because mm -hmm. yeah, we had to deal with the culture of the South. You know, sin in the South is smoking, drinking, chewing, running around. But there's a, I got news for you, there's other things that are sin. Amen. Like backbiting, gossip, <laughs> division. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But in, so we hear the word lust before, right away. We think of sex, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, it involves that, but it actually you could actually the, the words translate a strong personal desire. Mm -hmm. So what James is saying is, and we're talking about free will. He said, he said, don't say anyone's tempt. God tempts no man. Every good and every perfect gift come down to the Father in heaven, Father of light. Amen. He said, no one is tempted when he's, but they're tempted when they're carried away and enticed by their own lust or their own desire. Nobody, the devil don't make you sin. I don't make you sin. Right. You, you, we, as human beings, when we, we sin, which means to miss God. That's what sin means, miss the purpose of God. It's because we have a desire to do whatever it is. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Now, when we do whatever it is, we don't. We don't. We're very. We got amnesia, kind of spiritual amnesia. We don't realize, or we don't expect there to be a result of our sin. I mean, it's like when you go buy a car, and 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 they show you special favor, and they sell you that brand new car at a price that you can afford. And then six years later, you're riding around in a piece of junk, still paying for a new car. Uh huh. Amen. You nobody made you buy that car, That's right. did you? Can anybody mm -hmm. say amen? Amen. Nobody made you buy that car, but you saw it, lust the eyes. You wanted it because your neighbors had one. Lust of the flesh, a pride of life, pride of life. Lust of the flesh is you know it just it went up. Right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to pay for it. Yeah, right. You never have a, have you ever had a used car sales that actually sit down and tell you and, and remind you of the fact that six years, like, what, is it eight years now? I don't know. How long did it take to pay for a car now? They got, they're more than my house cost. I heard that. <laughs> you ever sit down and say, now you realize now in five or six years, this thing's going to be falling apart and you're still going to be making the payment for a new car. Plus full coverage insurance on something that is not even worth it. In fact, if you drive it off the lot and bring it back, we won't be able to give you what you paid for it five minutes ago. We don't have to knock off a couple thousand dollars. Depreciation, you understand? Mm -hmm. right. How come they don't figure in depreciation when you buy it? Right. Won't you ever tell them, this thing's not going to be worth this $2,000 on a lot. They'll mm -hmm. say, well, go get your car somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Right. We're led, and I'm not down buying cars, but I'm telling you that you're led by <coughs> your own. Nobody made you buy that car. That's right. You made a decision. When you make a decision, there's always a consequence. Amen. It's either a blessing or a curse. You ask me at five years, six years now, if your car is a blessing or a curse. We did, we've done it. I bought a car. We bought a car years ago. It was new. We couldn't afford it. They sold it to us anyway. They were going out of business. We find that later on. They just sell it to anybody. Anybody walked out straight to the zone. We bought the car. We paid for the car. It was a, it was not a blessing. You know, finding one on the side of the road for five thousand dollars in good shape, and paying cash for it, and then, and then riding around with liability insurance and a paid for car—that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. The guy told us I was good back. This the guy told us when we bought it. I said, "Well, I only make this much money. I'm a pastor." I had to go. I had to clean toilets to get the money to make the payment. I had to get me a job in the county. Sorry, right, I don't mind working. But the guy says he told me. He says, "Don't worry about it right now." He said, "Things are going to get better for you." He's prophesying over there. He said, "Things are going to get better for you. You're going to be making more money this time next year. You'll be able to afford this." 
He didn't know that the, that the church I was pastoring, I had to leave it right after I bought the car and didn't have a job. Amen. And he didn't care. And he didn't care. Because they went out of bed. I'm just glad you see this. The, the Bible says that, that when you sin, you, you're, draw, you're drawn. Nobody makes you sin. The devil didn't make you do it. Say it. The devil didn't make you do it. Remember that? Flip Wilson? You saw it here all the time. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. That's the little kids. She made me do it. My brother made me do it. My sister. No, they didn't. You let away. You did what you wanted to do. At least own up to that. I did what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Each one is tempted is carried away by it, enticed by his own lust. Blessed, listen, blessed, say blessed, blessed, is the man who perseveres under trial. You know what that means? That means when the pressure's on you to tempt you to do something, the, the devil uses your own desires and your own love. He knows what your lusts are. You know that? He's very familiar with what turns your ticket on. He said, who per perseveres under trial. That's what a trial is. The trial is a temptation. The trial is a temptation. When you're presented with a new, another cheeseburger to say no. Mm -hmm. Or you're presented with an opportunity to buy a house that you can't afford. You say no. It hurts. You feel bad. They'll beat you up. You're no good. You'll never mind anything. You're all your relatives have got nice houses. Look what you're living in. Mm -hmm. Look what you're driving. Look at the clothes you're wearing. You're never going to mind anything. Go ahead. At least you'll look like you're successful. Is this, anybody get this? Uh -huh. He said, blessed is a man who, who perseveres. For once he's been approved, he'll receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised those who love him. Yes. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Amen. But each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then, when the lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, when sin does what it does, it brings forth death. death. Mm -hmm. The death doesn't mean necessarily physical death. It can be an emotional death. It can be a... It's all kinds of death. Death is where there's no absence of life. Say the absence of life. Absence of life. <laughs> you can go to church and be dead. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's no life in the church, there's no life in you, it doesn't make a difference. Where you're at, it's what's inside you. It's what's in your heart. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sin wants to get in your heart. It comes knocking at your door to get you to miss God. Mm -hmm. And when you let it in because of some desire you have, some desire you have, Come on, I'll get, I'll get, I'll, I'll get over the money. I'll, I'll get money. Let's get money. Let's say, let's say you had your time. I, I know people, and thank God they're trying to. That, that when they get there, as soon as they get paid, that they'll they'll write their tie check or get their money, and and they'll run to us and say, "Here, keep this, because I'm afraid I'm gonna spend it." Now, this honorable that they want to do what's right, yeah. but come on. God don't want you living in fear. Amen. Make a decision. You're going to wait and you're going to bring it and you're going to worship God with your money. Amen. Right. You're not, you're not, it's like, you know, what's the balance? To get people to do what's right, but yet they want to have, they, God wants you to have freedom so you can really enjoy the blessing. Amen. God wants to bless you. He wants you to overcome. Amen. Blessed is the man that overcomes temptation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Crowned with life. God wants you to have life. Amen. Mm -hmm. You say you've got you've got money set aside. You, the Lord told you to give a seed to somebody, a missionary or somebody. Give give a, give it, bring your tithe like y'all take. If it's your house, the house you worship in, your tithe belongs in. Are you following? That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And, and and you say and you go, well, oh man, I gotta pay this, or I want to pay this, or I want to get this. And you take your gift that God told you, gave you, you see, and you spend it on something else. <clears throat> Let's say you tithe, because there's, there's benefits to the tithe. Said so he rebuked the devourer. Amen. Come on, there's benefits to it. 
if you'll if you'll sanctify your money with the first ten, God will it, you'll sanctify the rest of it. Amen. If you got ninety percent unsanctified, it's devil territory. That's right. That's right. You follow? Mm -hmm. So when 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 you when you fail to do what God's told you to do, or you know God told you to do, you don't do it, and then this and then something happens. What happens? Sin's given birth. It's going to have results. Sin results in something physically happening. Mm -hmm. Something breaks down. Something goes haywire. Are you out there? You realize most people pay. But you're going to let me tell you something. You're going to pay your tithes whether you pay them to the church or not. That's right. You'll either pay them, you'll offer them to God as worship, or the devil will take them. Mm -hmm. right, if you don't get, if your eyes are ever open up to that, you won't have any problem tithing. Amen. We, Pamela and I quit tithing one time. <clears throat> For one week. This is years ago at First Class. And I was raised in the Methodist Church. They didn't teach tithing. I just got bread in the Bible. We stopped one, and what, I, what the equivalent of our tithe, we lost about five or six times that week because stuff started breaking. I, I couldn't believe it. The guy won't let me get away with nothing. He may let he may have a long leash on you, but I got a short one on me. Because I asked him years ago, don't let me get too far. And things start breaking down, man. I tell you, I couldn't wait to get some plate tired. Because we had faith in what we were doing. That's right. So if we knew it worked and we deliberately didn't do what we knew was right, that was sin. Mm -hmm. You know that? Mm -hmm. If you don't know any better, it's, but when you know something. That's right. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't sin if you don't know it's wrong. That's why the the law came in to increase sin. They were doing that stuff. They were doing stuff they didn't know was wrong, and all of a sudden the law came and it, ah, it killed me. It broke my relationship. But God set it up like that. Amen. So you need Jesus. Amen. <laughs> he wants you to become aware. Come on, he wants you to become aware that you're living in a, in a ditch. So you get out of the ditch. Amen. He didn't put you in the ditch. Right. You know that? He didn't put you in the ditch. He wants to be aware you're in the ditch. So he can, you can grab the rope of salvation and be pulled out of the ditch. Yeah, amen. amen. Come on. Oh. Every good thing. Say every good thing. Every good thing. Let me back up verse 6. Do not deceive, be deceived, my beloved brethren. But every good thing and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who, with whom there is no variation or, sh or shifting shadow. In the exercise of His will, He brought forth the word of truth so that we would be the kind of first fruit among His creatures. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Now run back up there to, to Deuteronomy. I know I'm running you. I've, I've gotten you now. So Deuteronomy 30. Go back here. And I'll, and I'll finish with this. Did you get anything out of that? Yeah. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. <clears throat> this is the Lord speaking to the children of Israel. He's repeating the same thing He told He told Adam and Eve in the garden. It's the same thing He tells you every day. Amen. It's repeated over and over again. He's saying, see, listen, see, I have set before you today life and prosperity. People don't think prosperity is in the Bible. He actually said it. He said, I've set before you right now life and prosperity. See it? See, I see a table set before you. Mm -hmm. It's prepared before you in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying, look, I've set on the table life. I've set prosperity. And I've set death, and I've set adversity. Can you imagine a table before the presence of God with life and prosperity here, and death and adversity here? Mm. He's doing this is in the realm of the spirit. How angels were witnessing this. In that I command you today to love the Lord, God, hey, God, hey, <coughs> your God, your Elohim. To walk in His ways, keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering in to possess. 
But if your heart turns away, and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today, you will surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land which you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life. Say it. Amen. Choose, choose life. life in order that you may live and your seed, your descendants, mm -hmm. your children. By loving the Lord your God, by obeying His voice, and by holding fast to Him. For this is your life and the length of your days. And you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. That's an awesome, that is an awesome thing. He said, I've set before you life and I've set before you death. Life brings blessing. Death brings cursing. And I'm not talking about cursing. I'm not talking about saying vulgarities. I'm not curse is something that destroys your life. And God's, listen, God's not saying, some of you, you know, people, if I didn't have any luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Baloney, come on. That's luck, something you're passing the buck to something else. Mm -hmm. Even people that use the word luck, they have any sense, they say, I'll make my own luck. What you're talking about is I'm taking responsibility working with the universe and getting things to work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there are laws, God made laws. This, you know how you, how, you know that the universe is just not randomly thrown up there, just flopping around and everything? That, that billions of galaxies are, are going around and, and, and planets and stars are, are moving in, in order and everything works in order. Everything works in order in this universe except human beings. Amen. That's no joke. That's true. Because... Human beings are the only creatures God ever made like Himself. And they have this common denominator with the Creator. They have a free will. Angels do not have a free will. That's why Satan fell. And Isaiah says, I'm going to be like the Most High God. I will ascend. He was exercising a will that he did not have. He acted like he had a will, but he didn't have one. Legally, he didn't have a will. Right. So he was cast down. That's why there's no redemption for Satan. That's why there's no redemption for fallen angels, because they did not have the permission to make a choice. You did. Amen. Amen. That's why there's repentance and forgiveness of sin for you, because the Father knows you've got a free will and you're probably going to mess up. And He loves you so much, He's made a provision so you won't be destroyed with Satan. That's right. That's good talking, man. <laughs> Revelation. Your angels don't have any free will. They have to do what Daddy tells them. Daddy tells them, follow her, follow her around. And make sure she don't get killed. I got something for her today. Follow her around and protect her. Now they will if you if you won't just mess them up with your words, yeah. saying dumb things and they don't know what to do. Come on, they haven't got a free will. They can't decide to help you if they want to. That's right. That's they hearken to the voice of the Lord in the earth. Amen. If you're talking God's word, they'll do the God's word. Amen. If you're talking about your doubt and unbelief, you, you they just. They, an angel can't do this. He can't say, well, I feel sorry for them. I think I'm going to help them out. They don't, they're not humans. They're angels. Amen. They're creatures. Mm -hmm. They're designed for a purpose. They're far superior in their intelligence and, more, and abilities than you are, but they're not the Son of God. Amen. Right. Get over it. Come on. The, the greatest angel, one of the greatest angels that ever existed was Satan. And He's under your feet. Amen. What does that say about who you are? Amen. 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 Mm. Oh, we're just an old sinner saved my grace. <laughs> I'm just an old worm. Mm -hmm. Tell Daddy that. Mm -hmm. He went to a lot of trouble to save your sorry money. Amen. 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 
And that was me talking, not him. Okay. That's why I feel about you and me too sometimes. But it's not. I can't do that. I have to repent. You're not a sorry butt. You're a, you're a son of God. You're Amen. a daughter of God. Amen. Amen. This is what ministry has to deal with. <laughs> treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. Amen. You have to keep telling yourself, my faith is treasure. My faith is treasure. My faith is treasure. My faith is treasure. Faith is treasure. Amen. Amen. I got there. Amen. This is good. Amen. Amen. So this is the thing. This is the thing. This year. This year. If you if you could learn one thing, don't quit. Quit learning a bunch of stuff you're not doing. <laughs> learn this one thing <clears throat> that the Father. Every day you rise up, it's good to choose life. Amen. Amen. Say it out of your mouth. Life. You, how many of ever ever woke up one and go, oh no? <laughs> Trying to be not be ugly because you got older ladies in here and I don't want to embarrass them. I didn't wake up and go, oh crap, it's Monday. <clears throat> I did it anyway. Yeah. I'm bad. Yeah. How many of y'all have done that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the officer saying, I choose life. Sure. You can go ahead and say that, you know, because your flesh slipped out and you did that. But just, but just come to yourself and say, I choose life for it. I don't yeah. know how life is going to work. Yeah. Right. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. But you do. And my cho look, your choosing, your choice sets in motion spiritual angels in motion. It sets Holy Spirit in motion. It sets all kinds of things in motion. Just your choice. Right, amen. How many of y'all ever chose Jesus got born again? Amen. Born from above. How many did it? Was that, a, that was a choice, wasn't it? They even call it in churches, make a decision for Christ. Don't they say that? Make a decision for Christ. Well, that's right. You decide. I'm going to follow Jesus. When you made a decision to follow Jesus, were you perfect? Mm -hmm. no. No. It's been a long time you've been following Jesus. Are you perfect yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you still follow Jesus, aren't you? You know you can, you can make a decision not to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. People do it all the time. They turn their back on Him. If, if, if they're mature enough, He'll let them turn their back on Him. Mm -hmm. If they're babies, He'll just go get them just like you would a little kid. If they ran out the front door and, and disobeyed, you go get them for them. God's mercy. What comes to chance? You can just choose Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you, how many want to be blessed? Amen. Amen. Who wants to be blessed? Yeah. Amen. Choose Jesus. Amen. Jesus say, I, He said, I am the way. The I am the truth. I am the life. Nobody comes to Father. the Father, Father Daddy, Father. except through me. That's right. What an arrogant thing to say. Hmm? What an arrogant. What kind of? It was an arrogant. He actually said that. But I thought he was just a he was just a teacher, a great teacher, a wonderful humanitarian. Uh, 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 human, what do you say? Human, human, humanitarian? Oh, he was so good. He was one of the great teachers. One of the great avatars. <laughs> well, if he was a great avatar, he was crazy. Because he said, he said, you're not, you're not coming to the Creator. That's right. Except through me. And he wasn't arrogant, he was telling the truth. He, he said, I'm the door. I'm the way in. I'm the way, I'm the, I'm the portal into the heavens. Amen. Anybody comes up with another way is a thief and a robber. Do you know y'all are such good Christians? You don't know there's new age people out there, there's new age churches, there's people walking in the heavens, they're doing stuff, they're levitating, they're doing all kind of stuff. You just freak out and go, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know why they're doing it? They've gotten into the heavens illegally. They've gotten there through drugs. got through meditation. I did it. Mm -hmm. They're dabbling in, in, in the realm of the Spirit without the blood covering them. That's right. That's right. They, can, they can heal people. They can do stuff people in church can't even thought about doing. That's right. They're doing it illegally because it didn't come through the door. Amen. Right. The Lord wants you to enter into the heavens. He wants you to walk in the Spirit. He wants you to experience angelic activity. He wants you to have visions and dreams. He wants you to have knowledge of things you shouldn't have. You, you don't have on the natural. He wants you to be blessed. Amen. Amen. But he said, "Come into the door." Amen. You come in my front door, knock on it, and get permission. Come in. You go to my refrigerator and eat out of it. Mm -hmm. But you come in through the window. You gonna get. You gonna get a shotgun. You might get in the house. You might get in the refrigerator. You might get out. It might come back again. You might come back five times before I catch you. But if I catch you, I'm going to shoot you. That's right. Amen. Amen. 
He said, yes, you're crazy. No, that's where the heavens are. You can go in and out without Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can have visions. You can see stuff. We're not going to see stuff. You, you might get away with it a while, but you're going to get caught in there. That's right. That's right. And you ain't going to have no blood covering you. That's right. I'm calling people right now that, that are involved in this stuff. You dabble in witchcraft. I dabbled in I was weak. I dabbled in witchcraft. I meditated. I took drugs. I got in the spirit realm. But it almost killed me too. That's right. Amen. Jesus. Now I can enter in with joy. Amen. Yeah. As a welcome son, not, not an enemy to be caught and stalked. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I can hear I can hear the joy for a voice. Yes. Enter in, Son of God. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Hallelujah. Daughter of God. Amen. Come to see your king. Amen. Yeah. I love my son. Come to the throne. Come to the throne. Come boldly. Come on. Come on in boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. Yeah. Enter in by the blood. Shoot, man, who would not want this stuff? I don't Amen. know. <sighs> You're nuts. Don't swap religion for this. <laughs> don't swap dead dead stuff for this. Don't swap. Don't do it. You crazy? Sure. Taste and see that the Lord's good. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Taste and see that Yahweh's good. Yeah. Taste and see that Yahweh. Hey. Mm. Oh, hey. It's good. Yeah. Taste and see. Yeah. Come on. Oh, 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 I like it. I just like stand right here and just soak in some of this. Who oh, call on my side? I don't want to stop. I can't stop. I'll stop. Everybody can breathe the sign for me. Praise God. Choose life. Yeah. <laughs> Choose life. I hope y'all got some of this. Did you get some of it? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's not our arrogant statement. It's a state of reality, a state of uh, uh, fact. Amen. Amen. If I go to Southern California from here, I'm going to have to cross death battle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to go, go, go down that road. There's not that many roads go there. Amen? Yeah. If, I'm on, if I'm on the road to heaven, if I'm going to enter, and I'm not just talking about dying and going to heaven, I'm talking about if you want to enter into the things of God, the Spirit, well, you have to go through Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. But the, the good news is, this is good news, it's available to you. Whosoever will. Whosoever will. Sure. You need to get born from above. Yes. You need to get born from above so you'll belong. Then if you're born from above, then heaven's your home. Amen. Now I've said for years, heaven's not your home, but I'm just trying to get you to quit worrying about going to heaven. But heaven is your home. It's not necessarily you don't have to die and go there. That's right. Heaven's your home. The realm of the spirits is your home. The realm of God's your the kingdom of God is your home. Sure. Amen. Right. You should be you should be checking it out. Amen. Right. Amen. You should be experiencing the blessings of, of your heavenly home here on earth. Yeah. Healing. Amen. Prosperity. Amen. 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 Deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise yes, God. Yes. So the Bible says this. It says this in Romans 10. He said this. Paul said this. He says, Who shall who should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? He said, if you believe in your heart, you believe in your heart that, that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Listen to me. If you can believe that in your heart, that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you confess Him, that means you, with your, your voice, you confess, He's Lord. There is no other Lord. He's my Lord. Paul said, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now, just, just, just saying a little prayer and, and joining the church and getting wet in the baptism is not saving you. The, their heart cry, your heart cry, that Je recognizing that Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua, Hamashiach, is the Lord of all. That the Father, the Creator, His Father, made Him Lord over heaven and earth. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. That there is no other name. 
under heaven or earth by which a man, a human being, can come into a born from above experience and become a child of God. There is Buddha can't do it, Muhammad can't do it, Scientology can't do it, I don't care what do it, he can't do it, he can't do it. You can say it does it, but he won't do it. But the name of Jesus has the power to transform your life sure. from the inside out. Amen. 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 Amen.